Hi everyone, welcome to this Integrator 2021-04 release video. My name is Dirk Leroy, I'm with Yukamco in Ghent, and I'm pleased to be your host today on this tour around our new Integrator software version. There's a number of things, a number of features I would like to talk to you about in this presentation, and to do so, I will be switching to and fro between this PowerPoint, and at some stage, we will also be looking at some live demo and live software, uh, at which point you will see me use a uh, cockpit. So I will be hopping to and fro between one and the other as we are going along in this presentation. So let's get this thing on the road and see what this version uh, has on offer. Um, first one here, our famous time slide. Uh, in the highlights, uh, this version you will find, as usual, uh, two items. Um, one is the automatic inner outline detection, left column. And then uh, on the right-hand side, you will see upgrades to Java 11 and Tomcat 8. <clears throat> now, as usual, those are just two of the highlights. As you will discover with me, there is more in this version. Obviously, there is more in this version than uh, just these two, but we will see that in a minute. Um, the inner outline detection, to start with, what will it do? It will handle uh, automatically handle uh, boards with internal um, cutouts. Now, what the implication and what the uh, advantages of that is, we will see in the rest of this presentation and in the live demo. Um, the upgrade to Java 11, as we said, uh, also in the highlights, um, it's basically Java 11 or Java in general is one of the basic components inside our integrator software. And this 2021-04 uh, integrator release has a new version of Java embedded for all sorts of good reasons, which I will try to explain later on in this uh, presentation. Almost from the same drawer, you could say, is the next one is um, the Tomcat, the Tomcat web server software. Tomcat, uh, just like Java, is one of the software components, which is not ours, uh, software component that we use inside our product. And there too, we have taken the opportunity with this 2021-04 release um, to upgrade the version of software of Tomcat. So that's basically two things that are fairly well, uh, under the hood, you could say. It's not something that you see directly on the outside, uh, but it's there doing all the hard work. But apart from uh, these two, uh, the stuff under the hood, there is, of course, also the, uh, the general enhancements, which is um, a chapter which returns with every new integrator version. And those are the things that you really might be interested in because typically those are the things that you have been struggling with or items that you would like to have uh, resolved, um, new extensions, that sort of thing. So we will look at a number of those into the general enhancements section. And the other evergreen, the code malfunction fixes, um, a number of things from the previous releases that you reported us were not up to expectations and where our R&D team um, has given its best uh, to correct them. Right, so item number one, the automatic uh, inner outline detection. What this is about, well, as you can see on this picture, on the uh, in this picture, sorry, on the right-hand side, uh, we see somehow circular boards with a bit of uh, imagination um, with a hole in the middle. This is one of many configurations. There are quite a few types of boards that will have cutouts of some sort. Here it's a fairly big one, probably for an access to go through or something. Um, but in many other PCBs, you have other variants. Um, and up until now, basically what happens is when Integrator was doing the outline uh, detection, it was mainly concentrating or looking for uh, the outside of the PCB. Now the outside is of course very important because the outside uh, outline is going to set the size of the circuit and that will then define how many will fit into an assembly panel or how many will fit into a production panel. And so you could argue that, okay, as long as I have the outer contour or the outer edge, what good uh, would an inner uh, edge or an inner contour, uh, what good would it do? Well, I grant you this, you will not put uh, more or less circuits 
into a fabrication panel um, with or without the uh, inner cutout. But there are a number of other items uh, which are fairly important that um, maybe we should uh, we should consider. For instance, um, just like um, there's, there's, there's quite a few items on the QED report where we report stuff like uh, copper to outline or mask to outline. So your copper is so much away from the edge of the circuit, that sort of thing. Um, and if you don't have the inner cutout or the inner contour of a board available, if there is one, um, <clears throat> the information on your QED report will, of course, only tell you about the situation on the outside of the board and not on the, uh, on the inside of the board. So that is one of the very important reasons um, to have to make sure that you also have <coughs> excuse me the inner outline of the pcb in your uh, data so in order to detect copper or other features that are too close to the board inner edge not only to the uh, outer edge now you were able or you have always been able to add an inner contour to your outline layer in the integrator job uh, um, manually, let's say, interactively. A couple of versions ago, we introduced UCAM XWE, and um, it's no problem to take a job to UCAM XWE and to make modifications, for instance, to an outline layer, including adding the inside of uh, a board contour. That is still possible, but integrator 21 2021-04, sorry, uh, comes with this sophisticated analysis uh, and is going to examine peripheral data in the archive to try and detect these inner cutouts automatically. So where this board, if you would treat it in a previous version, where this board would just come out or have come out with um, the outer uh, contour, uh, with the two little ears sticking out to the left and to the right um, in the image here, it will now automatically come out with the uh, inner contour uh, as well. And as a result, of course, in the QED, in the analysis report, uh, this inner contour will be taken into account and we will report clearances when or when we report clearances to outline for, let's say, a copper feature, uh, then that will talk about both the uh, outer contour as well as the um, inner contour. So if so far in this board, uh, we reported 300 micron clearance to the outline uh, because that was the minimum on the outside. Maybe now you will find that if this inner contour is there, all of a sudden the clearance to outline has dropped to 120 micron because there is something fishy or something not quite okay there on the inside of the board. Yeah, so that's what this analysis uh, will do. Um, it will look at <clears throat> a number of other layers in, uh, or, sorry, it, it will look at, at um, the, uh, the whole set of the data layers in the archive and then try to figure out um, in which of these files uh, there might be uh, items that could uh, be representing the inner edge of the board. If or when that happens, uh, these inner contours, they will be copied automatically into the outline layer, and that will be then also be reflected and visible in the images that we generate, as we will see uh, in a second. But more importantly than the image, <clears throat> as we said, uh, the fact that this inner contour is there is going to allow you to catch any anomalies towards the inside edge uh, of the board. Um, at the quotation stage already, so at the very early stage of the uh, of the process, which is actually quite important because at that point, um, this will allow you to already feedback uh, to your customer in case uh, you uh, see or you find any problems. Imagine that this is the context of an MPI, a new product introduction, uh, where there is still intensive to and fro between you as a fabricator and your um, and your customer then it's um, essential, of course, uh, that you have this information and that this uh, part of the exercise is not overlooked uh, in order to avoid later on precious loss of time during CAM if they are, are going to be or if, if they have to be the first one to find out that is a bit of, um, of, uh, of a bugger, so to speak. <laughs> um, so Feedback to your uh, customer uh, about a potential problem 
uh, one. Avoid losing this uh, uh, or precious time and cam item number two. And the real nightmare scenario um, that we don't want to have is that you would potentially produce scrap if you uh, would have missed um, something about the inner uh, contour of the um, of a PCB. Right. Let's now turn to uh, our cockpit. Uh, we have here this data set that you have actually seen also in the uh, presentation. Just briefly want to go through with you. So the DE archive comes in. It's in this case, it's a Gerber archive. There's a number of layers. And in a number of these layers, uh, there will be uh, potentially information available that will help us um, detect or find inner uh, contours. In this case, these, this information typically is in one or more um, uh, drawing layers, you could say. So image image layers, we will, we will look at uh, image layer, just to be clear. Uh, these algorithms are uh, examining um, the data, like the, the Gerber data that you would have, the same information that you would have for your, uh, for your copper layers. Um, and sometimes it's like, in this case, there is a layer here, which is called the um, outline. Other examples spring to mind. There is a very common extension in a certain type of Gerber sets data archives, uh, which is called the .gko. The .gko layers are typically some sort of um, relatively clean um, outline information layer. That can be a potential source of information if we uh, if we have it. Um, there is items in a layer name that can be an indication. Like in this case, it was outline, but there is also a like board, board edge, uh, blah blah blah. If ever you have dealt with eagle files, um, typically there is a layer in eagle datasets which is called or which can be called dimension. Um, also. Or similarly, in Eagle, there can be a layer which is called milling. Um, I'm forgetting a number of them, uh, but it's this type of layer that we will want to examine and see if there is um, if there is anything to be uh, to be found in there. If that is the case, if the algorithm uh, finds uh, something interesting, then what it will do. I have now the same job here in my. Uh, you can XWE, what you will see is indeed, um, when we just look at the outline layer in this job, you will now see that it has both the external edge as well as the, um, as the inner uh, area um, for delimiting uh, the circuit. Yeah. Uh, other layers that we, uh, so we have the set of layers that I just named there, depending on the um, on the input format. Um, we will also examine, quite often this information can also be found in mask layers. Uh, so in some cases we will be looking at uh, mask layers to see if we can extract some information from there. So um, that should yield you the uh, proper image outline both on the outside and on the inside of the board. Having said that, as we said before, um, you always have the possibility to go in here to take your uh, UCAM XWE and to make any modifications that you still find useful in case um, you want to do so. All right. This option doesn't come with an extra license. We don't have to apply for anything. It's uh, free of charge. So as soon as you have installed the uh, 2021-04 integrator release, um, you should see some uh, results without actually having to do um, anything extra. Right, so far for the um, inner outline detection, let's move to these uh, two other items, the software upgrades. The software upgrades inside our own software, the Java version and the Tomcat. First, a brief word on the uh, Java. So the Java that we have embedded uh, from this release onwards is um, Java 11. And some of you who are using our UCAM X product in the CAM department may remember that at the back end of last year, in December last year, the version of December last year, um, we moved 
to Java 11 already with our UCAMX product. And so now um, Integrator follows uh, suit and is now also moving to the same uh, Java 11 um, insight. So that brings the two, our leading edge UCAMCO software products on the same footing. And that is, of course, a um, clear advantage for uh, people who are into automation. So those of you who are writing hyper tools or writing scripts, um, as you may or may not know, um, hyper tools can also be used in an integrator uh, context, just as they can be used in a UCAM context. And it is, of course, uh, of advantage if, you, if your code is of the same level uh, for both products and uh, one of the key requisites for that is that the underlying software <clears throat> is of the same make and model. So in this case, um, with Integrator being on Java 11, just as your UCAM X um, automation that encompasses uh, both systems uh, becomes a bit more straightforward. Uh, some of you might notice that or ask the question why Java 11, because uh, there are more recent versions of uh, Java. Uh, our previous version that we used to use both in UCAM and in Integrator was Java 8. We now move to 11 and 11 because this is the currently the most recent what they call LTS, the long term support uh, Java release. Um, as we will see in a minute, I have an overview slide from the uh, Oracle site. Oracle, by the way, who is the um, the person responsible uh, for Java and the Java development. Um, so there are definitely more recent versions of Java, but uh, they do not rank as LTS. They are not long-term supported versions. And it's important for us, of course, that we know that once we implement a version in our product, in our integrator or UCAM products, that we are sure that this product is going to be maintained um, in a decent way uh, from by Oracle in all sorts of aspects like security and if there are performance issues and uh, that sort of thing. Um, they have this system, Oracle has this system uh, where they have at some points LTS versions uh, and that guarantees us as users of Java 11 a fairly long, it's between five and eight years or nine years of support from Oracle for that version that they will continue to bring out patches um, and uh, corrections if that is uh, if that is necessary. Uh, so that's why we um, are currently on the Java 11 and not the 12, 13, or I believe the most recent one is like 16 or 15 or so. Um, the version that we use, the OpenGDK Java Distribution Kit, uh, is exempt from usage fees. Uh, so that means that basically neither you nor we uh, have to pay Oracle uh, to use it, which is, um, well, let's say, a happy bonus for uh, for both of us. So that's uh, that's cool. And um, with Java 8 being no longer supported uh, by Oracle, uh, we now are again back on track and we know that Java 11 uh, will be guaranteed to offer patches and security updates uh, for a considerable number of years to come. And that is something that you can see in this slide here. So as I said, this is courtesy um, Oracle website. Uh, if you care to find it, um, or if you, care to, if you care to look, I'm sure you will find the same uh, overview. Um, so Java 11 LTS, the previous one, and now as you can see all the other ones, they went non-LTS 12, 13, 14. So those were uh, non-long-term support versions. Um, version 17 is allegedly due out in September 2021, which is, uh, well, depending on when you hear this, <laughs> may already have been the case, but you see the asterisk is there, the asterisk, if you go in on the website, uh, the asterisk mean no earlier than. So this date is um, an indication, September 21. And of course, when it comes out, it will still have the uh, usual toothing uh, problems and um, it will take some time to mature. And so during that time, uh, we will be safe with the Java 11 version that we have now um, embedded. 
in the introduction at some stage I said that this is uh, stuff that is happening under the hood and not uh, really visible to the user. Well, the, there is one item uh, which I would like to point out which is uh, important to the end user. Uh, you as a person uh, operating uh, the system or as a systems manager uh, taking care of the installation uh, at your site. Um, with Java 11, uh, Oracle have abandoned the Java Web Start technology. This is no longer supported. And Java Web Start technology was um, a mechanism that we could use or that we used, that we used to use, I must almost say, um, to make sure that a checkpoint, a checkpoint, which is our online analysis result uh, review tool, that checkpoint could be launched from the server. So you have, if you have an integrator set up, you have a server somewhere and there is a number of clients. Uh, the clients uh, would have the ability to run checkpoint if the license were available. Checkpoint is a licensed option, by the way. Um, but the clients could run this without the checkpoint software actually having to be installed on the clients. Checkpoint was installed only on the server and via this Java Web Start technology, it was possible to present it to the user on a client PC without the software actually uh, being installed on this client, the checkpoint software. Now, this Java Web Start um, has been abandoned in the uh, Java 11, and that means that from this version of Integrator on, so the 2021.04, um, if you are a checkpoint user or a DFM review user, which is a similar product, uh, both licensed, um, if you are using this, then you must take care to remember to install your checkpoint software from now on locally on the client PC. And that client PC as our application is a 64-bit. That uh, PC should also be a 64-bit uh, client computer. Um, that means that um, <clears throat> one of the things that has changed in the uh, user interface is in cockpit preferences general, <clears throat> Sorry, there used to be this option, use pre-installed checkpoint EFM review, yes or no. In the old days, or up until the uh, most recent version, you had the choice whether you want to, wanted to make use of the Java Web Start option, or you could already choose to install it locally, even in the previous version. Uh, but now this option is no longer there, because as we said, uh, the only option is to have Checkpoint um, or the FM review installed locally on your uh, client uh, PC. So that's something to heed. Um, no panic, don't get upset. Uh, if you're not sure how to do this or how this works or what this means for your um, installation or your setup, just feel free to contact the colleagues at the uh, help desk and they will be happy to assist and uh, talk you through uh, whatever is necessary or even do it together with you if you allow them a, um, a team viewer. So no worries there. Right, there is not much to see in the real life um, software about the Java 11. As we said, it's there behind the scenes and it does uh, its work. And the same can be said actually uh, for this little fellow here, it's the Apache Tomcat uh, web server. It is a piece of software um, that is uh, also at work behind the scenes of the integrated product. And that part is responsible, for instance, for the communication between a web server and our integrator. Uh, many of you by now have linked somehow their uh, web page that you offer to your end users. You have linked it to your integrator, to, had, to get some analysis result from your integrator server to your uh, to your website or to get some images or all sorts of things. <clears throat> so the piece of software on the integrator side that is capable of talking to your web server on the outside, for instance, that is this uh, one of the things that this uh, Apache thing does for you. But it's also responsible, uh, the, to the Tomcat software, responsible for if you have a setup in which, for instance, your ERP system can talk to your integrator directly to say, uh-huh, 
this uh, job XYZ in the integrator job queue has now become an order. So you must, you integrator must produce some outputs for come. If you have a set, a setup that works like this, um, then uh, a large part of the communication is also taken care of uh, by this uh, Tomcat web server. So again, it's something that you do not see or not see directly, but it's something essential and an essential building block uh, in order to make the whole uh, system work. And even though <clears throat> that you may not be overly familiar with it, with the name, uh, as a product, uh, rest assured that it's uh, used widely in a variety of indus industries, uh, certainly not only the PCB industry, but in many other domains. Um, Apache is regarded uh, very uh, highly as a trustworthy and a robust uh, tool. So uh, we will hope that um, it will also help your business thrive and keep your systems at the forefront of technology. Woo. So with these combined Java 11 and Tomcat 8 software upgrades, um, basically we ensure your systems remain at the highest level of security and performance. Now that is becoming a very, very important uh, topic or item. Um, the fact that uh, software platforms are safe and secure um, and at the same time, that they maintain uh, performance. The world has gone globally by now and uh, all sorts of systems are connected with all sorts of other systems, sometimes internally, but sometimes also out uh, towards the outside. So security is, um, is basically or should be a top priority uh, for any of us. Uh, these updates, the Java 11 and the Tomcat 8, uh, basically they don't trigger anything massively different from a user point of view, other than what we just said about the Java 11, where we had the checkpoint. Um, otherwise, uh, all these, uh, all the work is done behind the scenes and these components work actually in the background without you uh, as an operator, without you knowing or seeing. So there is uh, no worries there. The good news is that uh, these upgrades are integral part of the integrator installation procedure. So it's not that you have to go and download this version from that website uh, or log on to anywhere else to get this done. These components are built in into the installer and the installer actually will take care of putting the uh, correct bits and pieces in place, as well as putting the old versions aside. So the Java 8 uh, and the Tomcat 6, which was the predecessor from the Tomcat 8, uh, they will be moved out of harm's way so that the new software uh, will take uh, only these two new versions of these components uh, into account. This all happens transparently, as we said, during the installation of your integrator software on the server, no extra uh, hassle or uh, fuss. And we hope that with these updates um, that these will keep you in excellent shape um, to keep up with the latest technologies and developments of the current Windows uh, operating systems, uh, as well as for uh, future uh, operating systems that may, uh, that may follow. Right, so that uh, concludes this part where we had the upgrades Java and Tomcat. Uh, now let's have a look at uh, item number three. Oh yes, by the way, uh, these two other items, the Java and Tomcat, uh, at the risk of stating the obvious, but they don't come with the license or there's nothing extra required or needed. It will be there after you have installed uh, the integrator release uh, 2021-04. Right, then to a number of the uh, version enhancements. Um, one of them is uh, this one you see here, the custom parameter translation into QED PDF. Now maybe just a brief uh, refresh. What are custom parameters? There is a whole bunch of parameters that integrator does as part of the analysis. There is the copper to copper, the copper to outline, the minimum ring, the mask overhang, you name it, it is in there. Uh, but there is, Basically, those are product related uh, parameters, you could say. Um, next to this, you as a, as a fabricator may have the need 
to define your own um, parameters, things that are not necessarily related to a design or to, to copper or whatsoever, but uh, characteristics that you find useful to have on a QED report in order to talk to your customer or for uh, further internal use within your company. Um, a typical case is like, uh, I don't know, I'm inventing what shelf life. Um, some people want to have the shelf life of a PCB as part of the uh, product characteristics. Shelf life is not something that we do in Integrator by default, but it can come in as a custom parameter. Okay, so there's the definition, what is a custom uh, parameter. Now, up until now, we had the situation that uh, if you define a customer parameter, let's take the same one, shelf life, you go into one of your uh, setup files of Integrator and you enter the word there, shelf life. Okay, that will appear on the report at a certain moment. But now the thing is, um, you as a fabricator may be dealing with different customers who speak different languages. And there is a standard mechanism in Integrator to generate a English QED or a French QED, a German QED, a Chinese QED, that's all there. <clears throat> but up until now, your custom parameters were only in one language, only the language that you had chosen in the setup file, in my example a minute ago, shelf life. Yeah. So also your French customer or your German customer or your Chinese customer, they would find somewhere on the report something which was talking about shelf life. With this version of software, it has become possible that you also have the translation mechanism available for your own uh, parameters. So for your custom parameters that you have defined yourself, as you see here in these uh, screenshots, um, on the left, that would be the terminology that would be used if you would be generating a QED in English. Those two columns would actually all be your own um, parameters. Shelf life is not uh, one of them, but you have an example here. Uh, this is courtesy of one of my colleagues in China, by the way. Um, you have a number of other examples that people use. Um, and so if we now generate a report in Chinese, also this part um, of the terminology would be translated uh, to Chinese. And if we were to send a report to our German customer, we could make sure that then uh, these custom parameters uh, would be available in uh, German. Um, there is some setup to do. <clears throat> you see the system here on the uh, on the second topic, how it's done, um, what you have to do. But again, if you're not familiar uh, with this sort of thing, or if it's the first time that you uh, have to deal with this, feel free to contact uh, the colleagues at the help desk and they will be more than happy to assist, I'm sure. Another item is um, an extension on the QED PDF report is about the VIPO. The VIPO, uh, short for the via in pad plated over. Uh, sometimes it's just VIP without the plated over. Uh, you will probably know or remember from uh, QED reports that you have seen that uh, via in pad VIPO is not something new. Uh, we have done this uh, from time immemorial, I would almost uh, say, but um, we have made an extension to this. Um, and the extension is actually shown here at the bottom. At some point, we will have a look in the, or we can actually do this right now. If I go back to my integrator and we would be turning to, uh, shall we do this one? Uh, or this one, whatever. Uh, let's take this one maybe. Yeah, so this is a QED report. Um, if I do via in, I should be, this would be the part that you have always had, via in pad, just a yes or no. There are or there are no via in pad situations. That was in the summary. Uh, if I look for the next one, the next one will bring me to a section which is called drill tools, drill versus copper the one that you see over here. And there you will now find an uh, extra column at the end in which we will uh, do the following. We will go through all the tools in all the uh, drill files. And some of these tools will have a function uh, via. 
via tools. Um, they can be in regular PTH, so through whole plated files, or they can be in blind and uh, buried, as you see here at the bottom. And in this last column, we will state each time um, the number of drill hits for that particular tool that are found to be present in a uh, via and pet situation. So in this case here, it means that in the drill file for this product, the blind drill file from one to two, <clears throat> sorry, there is a drill diameter one, uh, 150 micron. There are 389 um, drill hits that will actually drill through a um, SMD pad or BGA pad, uh, VIPO or via in pad. In this case, pad is considering both um, the uh, SMD pads as well as um, BGA pads in case they would be uh, they would be drilled. Now, what's the uh, direct benefit of this? Um, sometimes designs have um, a via in an SMD for basically no good reason. Uh, it, it's like uh, if you have a design and there is like only three of these uh, via in pads, via SMDs, sometimes it's very useful <clears throat> to just go back to the um, uh, to your customer, uh, point this out, um, and maybe with some uh, with very limited effort, uh, your designer is able uh, to get these three out of the way. Because of course, um, via in pads, uh, if you're looking at it from a manufacturing point of view, um, it is an extra process or a number of extra processes have to take place if you really insist on having these vias in your SMD or BGA pads. Um, and so it does make a product more expensive. And again, if there is 6,000 of those in a board, then it was probably meant and intended to be like this. But if you have cases where there's only a handful of them uh, via in pads, then this uh, extra information will now help you to go back to your customer and say, look, do you are you aware that you have this and this situation on the board and blah, blah, blah. So conversation started and something that can maybe uh, sort it out uh, easily. <clears throat> That is what we said in here. So if there is not too many of them, maybe CAT can eliminate them and you will be able to produce the board um, more efficiently. <clears throat> and so your information, the information that you're looking for is in this uh, drill tools, the drill versus copper section on your, um, on your QED. And there the numbers will indicate how many of these uh, drills were found to be part of a VI and PET situation. Okay. Then we come to um, an addition in the uh, dynamic panel optimizer. Dynamic panel optimizer, uh, as you can see, it has an asterisk. So the uh, dynamic panel optimizer itself is a licensed uh, option. So not all of you uh, may have it, but if you do have it, you will now find something if you um, if you turn to the the QED section, which is called Panel Optimizer, um, you will find the following thing. The usage column is now showing you uh, various filling degrees for a number of situations. One of the things it reports is the filling degree for the PCB within the fabrication panel. Another one is the filling degree for the PCB within the shipping unit, if there was a shipping unit. And then the last one that it reports is uh, the filling degree for the shipping unit inside the fabrication panel. All right. So if we would turn to uh, this first example here, we are looking at a fabrication panel which is 620 by 520. That comes somewhere from a software setup. And for the job I was treating in this particular case, it tells me that, okay, if you, uh, if you take this PCB and you put it in uh, the production panel as such, so the PCB straight into the, the fabrication panel with, I don't know what the values for the spacings uh, were. Of course, there were some uh, spacing values involved as well. Then he says you will have a 60% uh, filling degree. So by putting the PCB directly into the fabrication panel. Yeah. If you um, 
first put the PCB into a shipping unit. Ah, it's a bit, let's take the second example. <laughs> One of the numbers is being hidden by the tooltip, sorry. Uh, so in this case, we have the 59%, the PCB goes directly into the uh, fabrication panel. One of the options that the DPO has calculated is one of the possible shipping units that would fit uh, nicely or that would do nicely in combination with this PCB and um, this production panel is a shipping unit which is sized 282 by 200, let's say. And if you would uh, put the PCB inside the shipping unit, the shipping unit would have a filling degree of 77%. And if that shipping unit were then to go into this fabrication panel, then the shipping unit to fabrication panel filling ratio would also be 77%. Yeah. So PCB directly into the fabrication panel, you come out with 59%. If you put the PCB into this particular shipping unit, uh, you will have a filling degree of 77% of the shipping unit, the shipping unit, which in this case, sorry, would be an assembly panel. Yeah. Um, so you put the PCB in your assembly panel. And then if you put this assembly panel, the same assembly panel in your fabrication uh, panel that we had here, uh, that too would give you a 77% uh, filling degree. This information comes um, to replace the columns vendor and material in this report. Yeah? So there used to be something different in here. Uh, but this vendor and material information is basically only used when you use the sheet optimization. And sheet optimization in Europe, at least, is hardly ever done. Uh, so we have taken the liberty of, uh, rather than doing, wasting these columns on vendor and material, uh, to use them to um, for a better purpose and to have these filling degrees now in the uh, in the dynamic panel optimizer uh, report. As we said, dynamic panel optimizer, a licensed option. Um, okay. The overall performance improvements, also always part of the um, of the version enhancements. Uh, this version of the software, if ever you had to deal with, um, no, imagine the case of a badly painted uh, job where there's small openings in the painting. Um, that basically is something that we, in this version, will filter out for you automatically. Now the filtering out and not having this in the end data is already a very good thing. But more importantly, we also noticed that the presence of these small openings, uh, so the, 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 the badly painted areas, could sort of impact on the performance of the system. Yeah? So jobs would run longer for no good reason. And the reason, uh, the not good reason, was basically these small openings in the painting. So basically an oversight or, or a negligence, you could say, uh, on the CAM um, output uh, side. So in this version, we spot them, we remove them up front, and that will give you a, um, a cleaner job output. If you care to take your uh, data from integrator to UCAM X, uh, these small openings will already have been eliminated at the time the job starts in CAM. But more importantly, maybe um, it's um, by eliminating these small openings, the runtime of this type of job um, becomes much uh, better. So if you have these, if you remember such a job from before, just throw it into the new version and see um, see for yourself. The um, another one which comes back uh, almost in every version is the stack up recognition improvements. So this time we have included a number of improvements for CAM 350 DFM stream, as they are nowadays called. Uh, so for this type of uh, Gerber output manufacturing data sets, um, they had some system of their own to indicate uh, the layer structure. So which is layer one, which is layer two, which is layer three, which is the which is the mask layer. You have the naming convention on one side, but they had something inside the files as well. Uh, so we're now looking into this information inside the Gerber files, um, which unofficially uh, tells us uh, about how the stack up, stack up is supposed to be. And once we have found this information, there is a number of things that integrator can skip and it will just uh, take this information from there, which again, 
um, improves um, improves throughput because uh, the stack up uh, machine will will find this information and will come to a result faster. But more importantly, um, the stack ups are also uh, guaranteed to be correct or at least in line with what is in the Gerber files. If the information there is incorrect, then it's of course a different uh, different story. Um, similarly, recently we had a peak in a number of data sets that were using a specific file name convention with CS and PS. Um, which was generating some sort of confusion um, in the stack ups. Uh, this convention has now also been uh, absorbed into the software, you could say. And these two combined, so the CAM350 um, improvements together with this other um, naming convention, is again uh, making sure that this version will give you a higher first pass. Uh, stack up recognition hit rate uh, for the jobs that you um, that you sent through integrator the same could more or less be said about uh, this one here the additional recognition of various drill spell naming schemes you it's hard to believe that to indicate the start and the end layer of a drill file <laughs> there are so many different so many different conventions but they are and uh, new ones appear um, regularly so we have uh, taken care of implementing a number of um, drill layer naming schemes uh, to take the naming convention into account so that you have again the correct drill span or the integrator has the correct drill span right from the start and again that will uh, that links to the previous point where you will have a correct stack up and hence a correct qed report uh, from the first run you don't have to make any manual corrections afterwards and do a partial rerun uh, afterwards uh, the same, but then uh, for backdrill data, you may remember that uh, one or two versions ago, we introduced uh, support for uh, backdrilled products and uh, to recognize backdrill data, there is again some sort of family of naming conventions. So we have extended this family of our or our family, so to speak, of conventions that we can automatically recognize as being uh, backdrill layers. This is an all-time favorite, um, the double drill hits. A number of uh, customers had reported that in case there was a double drill hit, which uh, from one drill hit to the other, um, there was one micron of difference, either in X and in Y, uh, that for integrator it would not be regarded, or integrator would no, not regard this as a drop, double drill hit, sorry. Um, so what we have done is we provided um, a margin that you can set up yourself in one of the uh, setup files in the auto clean section, where you can define um, if two drill hits are within, I don't know, five micron away from each other, the system can regard them as um, being a double drill hit and eliminate uh, one of the two. Um, we've also looked at the layer uh, polarity recognition. Layer polarity recognition is one of these steps in uh, making the stack up and trying to find out um, uh, what the order of the function of layer is and in which polarity a layer is uh, sent to us. Uh, so we've done a number of tweaks there um, that should cut down uh, processing time as well on big type of backplane, huge boards with uh, fairly big XY dimension layers. Um, we thought that there was uh, some improvement that could be made. Uh, so that's something that we have incorporated in, the, um, in this version uh, as well. The last one on this sheet talks about a uh, region maker. A region maker is the um, module that is turning painted data into regions, into contours, or as you will see in the image on the right, not only painted data, sometimes uh, copper pores, they come in from uh, the uh, incoming format. Uh, they already come in as contours, but they are made with different contour apertures, uh, either uh, one next to the other, uh, but in many cases also with a slight overlap. 
and this slight overlap sort of situation is something that we have catered for in the 2021-04 release as well. So the region maker will now detect uh, these areas that overlap and will turn them into one big nice uh, contour area with uh, no inner contours um, anymore or these these double lines that you see there in the image on the right will be um, eliminated again that will do um, if you if you care to take your integrated data to um, UCAM via the clean job output uh, this optimization will provide um, a cleaner data set to your colleagues in the um, in the CAM department um, the nephew of the region maker is the pet maker and this one too has been overhauled in this release we are picking up much more um, painted non-standard pet shapes non-standard pet shapes being the not the rectangular the box or the square ones uh, but things like the um, what they're called home plates and whatnot uh, so a number of uh, pet shapes that um, come in as painted data and where we um, where we now will uh, recognize them and that of course will uh, provide you a higher accuracy data accuracy data in your uh, QED PDF report there is a number of sections on the report that talk or deal with um, SMD pads or pads in general um, and of course with a higher quality uh, data sets coming out of pad maker uh, these bits and pieces of information will be more accurate as well, in turn leading to uh, perhaps a more accurate uh, basis to make your uh, quotation from. We've also looked at the plated and non-plated uh, tool qualification and extended it with a number of powerful new rules. So you could say, okay, yes, plated, non-plated, uh, it's important. Uh, but okay, so what? Um, we had come to see that in a number of cases, we were producing these to-dos, plating warnings, uh, where we said there is incoming data, there is a drill file, we recognize it, but tool number seven, we believe, we actually strongly believe it's plated, but you might have a look. This but you might have a look was then translated into a to-do. So you would see at the end of the process uh, in your cockpit, you would find uh, something like, please check the plating of tool number uh, seven. Now, what we have found is that in many, 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 the vast majority of these cases, you went in, you looked at it, and you basically confirmed what integrator had suspected before. So there was, well, if it's, you, you could say that we were, fairly conservative or, or even highly conservative uh, in, in that respect. Um, so we have now built in a number of new powerful rules that will reduce uh, these uh, the number of to-dos, which is of course again adding to the number of uh, first pass automatic hit rates that you will have um, with this version. If this to-do is not there, you're not triggered to go and verify something that turns out to be correct in the end after all. Um, so that should be um, a bit of a bonus for the people operating uh, the system. The same thing could be said about uh, the drill tool function. So the previous one was just about plated and non-plated. Is the tool plated or non-plated? Um, in the same breath, we have been looking at the tool function classification. The tool function classification is the one that says, okay, this must be a via hole and this other hole, this other tool, that must represent a uh, component hole. Um, what's the importance of this? Again, uh, the quality of the QED and hence the quality of your uh, price offers um, are at stake there. And uh, in line with the region and the path makers, um, this qualification about via holes and component holes is something which is consolidated in the DPF data. And if that DPF data goes to your CAM department, the colleagues in CAM basically have a head start uh, because there is a whole bunch of information there which is already going to help them in terms of if you think of uh, yellow and copper adjustment, you, you need different minimum rings for via pads or via holes than what you would need on component pads and component holes. So if that 
information is there and correct, that is something that uh, gives them a head start in order uh, or in the process, in the further process of the uh, of the job in CAM. And then at the end, as usual, as we said, the evergreen, a number of fixes. We're not going to go through them one by one. I just let them uh, scroll by to uh, have an ID. Uh, if you want to pause the video because you think you recognize something that is of interest to you, please do. You will also find this list, by the way, with the release notes that are distributed, which is a shorted uh, version of what you've seen here. Uh, so you will find the same uh, or a, yeah, uh, the a textual overview of the fixes that we have um, that we have in this release as well. So there, uh, feel free to um, to have a look. Right, I think this brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for watching. Do stay tuned and have a look at the other videos that you will find on our website. Uh, you may or may not know that we are also releasing our uh, UCAM X product with the same version 2021.04 so if you're a user of the ucam x product and you have not seen the release video yet um, make sure that you uh, that you do all right it's bye from now for me thanks for watching and looking forward to having you again on one of the next tours bye bye